Hey guys, welcome back to another Lego Star Wars 2016 Star Wars review. And guys, this is the last, one, the second to last one, excluding the exclusive Lego Star Wars set that's going to be coming out in August. Uh, this is actually the last one in the main wave of summer sets for Lego Star Wars. And, th and this is Catcher Rex's ATTE from Star Wars Rebels Season 2. And guys, this set number is 75157. It is just 9.14 up, has 972 pieces. Is retailing for $119.99 or $120 US dollars. Now, guys, this set here is based on Star Wars Rebels. If you guys did not know that, this is actually a ATT customized by three old, uh, old version Kong Troopers from the Kong Wars anime series. And so, Star Wars Rebels is the two. This is how it basically start off. This took place like right after the season of the movie that aired in summer 2015. Showing the beginnings of season two and what, what we would expect from season two, and so with Darth Vader, everything coming back, everything. And so this this ATT Walker appeared in the very first two episodes of Rebels season two, and we got the introduction of Captain Rex, Commander Wolf, and Commander Gregor, and so this was and those two episodes were very big time episodes for season two because. We got Rex back, we got Wolf back, we got Commander, Commando Gregor back, we got Gregor from Season 5 of Clone Wars back, um, and, wow, it, it was, it was, they, they were great episodes, those two were great episodes, totally my favorite episodes, uh, in the season finale of Season 2, I think the, these, those two episodes will make my top 5 favorites, but so far, that we got into the series already, already for not knowing what's gonna happen in season three. So, so far these two episodes have been two of my top five. Um, just because it, this had a Clone Wars feel to it again, it brought back that Clone Wars feel because it, it brought back the Clone Troopers, it, it, their history, their life span during the Empire it, or sixty six. That it, the that feeling. That Kane had during Order 66 to be betrayed by the Clone Troopers, and everything that came back, that actually portrays into Kane's comic series called The Last Pound One. That, that really goes into relation to that comic series, which I have not read yet, but I've heard that it is good. That it, 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 it's a really good Star Wars comic series, and I'm definitely gonna read it. I'm gonna try to get it somewhere. Because I know it's a rare book in comic book now because it's not a story set much anymore, so I'm gonna try to look for it. Um, but I've heard rumors, I've heard, I, I've done reviews, I, I, have, I have not done reviews, I've watched reviews <laughs> on that comic series. And I watch them just the same, it's great. It's, it's an awesome comic series. One of their favorites is probably gonna be one of my favorites as well. And so, Ken, Ken was a big character for these two it, episodes, especially because. It really showed what K felt like towards Rex, Wolf, and Gregor overall because as soon as they, as soon as he realizes when they first meet the clone, when the rebels first meet the clone, um, it, Rex asked Ezra that that was his birth number and he was shocked that Ezra knew his birth number and so Ezra kind of was puzzled like okay, he didn't know what that meant and then K realized that they're clone troopers, and, and so right off the bat, his first reaction, pulls out his lightsaber and prepares to fight him, and so Wolf, he goes all ballistic, <laughs> um, yeah, Wolf, I couldn't tell why Wolf was still acting like that, even though he did have to chip in his head still, so I don't know, just because, he, he because, for what Rex said, in the first episode that they appeared yet, um, he said they were part of the Empire, but they didn't technically agree with everything that they did. It's what I think it is what happened. They took the chips out of their head, of course, and it, they, he, they act like that they were still in the Empire's ranks and with the clone, with the other clone troopers, but they didn't it, it really go with everything that they did, basically. And so, they kind of were drawn away from all that, and so, when they were where the entire army was retired by the Emperor himself. Yeah, it, it this really changed for these for these clone troopers, like they went out into exile and they sat on this desert planet for quite some time now with this alone with this lone ATT walker from the Clone Wars. And so 
Yeah. I can feel their depression. I can feel Wolf's depression as well because because if you join because he thinks if he joins joins can as well in the rebels, he's gonna think he's gonna betray the empire and what they were fighting for in, in the first place. And so, but Rex, he is the complete opposite of that because if he thinks that now that they're free of this pain of this fighting, that if we try to contact the Empire, if we arrest the rebels for treason, help them, then that's not freedom. To him, that's not freedom at all. And I totally agree with Rex on that. That's not freedom at all. Being with the, anywhere with the Empire, that's not freedom at all. And the Empire was basically represented as a terrorist movement. Caught the Nazi movement with World War II and everything. Because I think that's what the Empire was originally related to from when, it, when Star Wars was first, first being made, that George Lucas was probably thinking of, which would probably make some evil movement like the Nazi movement or something from Star Wars. Like it was Storm Troopers with these white, with this white armor representing them being all terrifying and everything, showing the power of the Empire and everything. And Dark Mayor, especially him coming through the 10 4 door, showing how powerful he is, showing how menacing he is, how scary he looks. His power. And so, I think that's what, what Rex was going for when he had to confront Wolf about what he did. Um, this is very interesting. And Gregor, he was great. He was really, really funny. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he was pretty funny. For him being a clone trooper, one of the last clone troopers of the galaxy, he was kind of a joker. <laughs> pretty funny guy. I gotta admit, he's something. I guess, for what I've heard, when they removed the chip from him, that it kind of changed his personality. And I can totally understand that because if you see season six of Clone Wars, that Mark of four sixty six with five, everything's very depressing. <laughs> um, he tried to figure out why he became like a Joker compared to the way he was like in season five of Clone Wars, where he was found on the void in the Clone Wars that with R two D two and the other droids and they were. Enjoy the Christian Margins from the Separatist movement. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, when they battled up against Talos and the ATAT, oh man, that was awesome. ATT versus ATAT Walker. That was something that I didn't expect to happen. I, w I wish for something like that to happen, but I didn't really thought it would happen. But I guess it's Star Wars, so we would expect anything is possible at this point for Star Wars now. Anything, anything can be possible. So they had to do it. Lucasfilm had to do it. Dave Boy had to do it. So I, I, I like that scene. I like that battle scene, that battle confrontation with the clone with the cow and the storage was out so cool. Okay. And what's actually interesting about the Bay Figure selection, guys, the Bay Figure, Bay, the Bay Figure selection is kind of lacking for me. The Storm Trooper, it's okay getting out of Storm Trooper once in a while. Fifth Brother, I'm very surprised that we didn't get both Inquisitors, so we just get Fifth Brother by. Do you understand it at the same time? Because in the, se in the second episode with, that we see with this ATT and such, we get a little glimpse of the fifth brother at the very end of the episode for like 30 seconds. And so I can't understand why they put the fifth brother of Quizzer Mayfinger in the set because of that. Because he was in the episode like for 30 seconds at the very end of the episode. So yeah. I can't understand why they put him in there. Very great job on the Mayfinger. But fifth brother for so like, I thought he was like the worst Sith villain ever in Star Wars to hit up to up to present day that he was probably the worst Sith villain ever. <laughs> because he basically did nothing <laughs> that could even bring terror to the rebels. <laughs> he didn't even do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't mean like he literally did do nothing, he just sat there and did nothing. He did do stuff but like, he didn't do enough to fear to hurt to pull uh, pull fear into out of the Jedi, he was, he was pushing fear into him, and so enough uh, that like Vader was. So I didn't really care if he died or not. <laughs> I was getting to the point where like I just want this guy to die. <laughs> just we would just die, just stay out of Star Wars forever. <laughs> and so I got, I actually got my wish, and Darth Maul killed him. So <laughs> spoiler, if you guys did not know that he died by the hand of Maul. Didn't really surprise me that much, but. <laughs> But yeah, catch the call to birds that we get in the set, Gregor, Wolf, and Rex. Very nice looking, there is a great detail, especially with the torso, but 
the legs, I think they could have been come off a little bit, but I, overall I really just think they should put the helmets on uh, uh, with the clones, especially. Because we did see their helmets in those two episodes, and we actually saw Rex wearing his helmet without Ezra wearing Rex's helmet, and we're like, why didn't I give him this helmet? Why? <laughs> why? Is it because of expenses? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> But the ATP overall, the main build of the set, I gotta tell you, it's, it's like a mix of different things. Um, <laughs> it's a mix with Star Wars, with um, art, I guess. I don't know. Uh, with the different types of art, customizing art, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, it is very different and unique to Star Wars. I can tell you right now, when I first saw this ATP with in Rebels, I do. This is Star Wars, so yeah, anything, anything can be possible. I can accept it, this ATT being like this. <laughs> because of the clone story. It kind of represented the clone story. It, tell you, it, it really tell, it told the Rebels how long they were actually on that planet. <laughs> and that they were on that planet for quite some time, and so yeah. Yeah, I can totally understand why they, they made this ATT look like this. <laughs> With these, all these cranes and platforms on top of everything, all around Walker and everything. everything. So, yeah. <laughs> they actually do have the 2013 ATT, and we're going to do a comparison on that as well. Just to show you guys the difference between this one and the actual ATT from the Clone Wars in Episode 2. So, yeah. I'm going to show you guys that. And so, I know I've been talking about these characters for quite a while, so if you guys are the main figures, guys. And then we'll get into the main build, the walker itself, in the, in the comparison, along with it, so we'll get to follow us afterwards. So let's go back. Okay guys, so the first two main figures I'm going to show you guys is the fifth brother, Inquisitor, and the Stormtrooper. And so, let's look at the Stormtrooper first, just to get him out of the way. Um, Stormtrooper... Basically, the, the same exact story that we're getting since 2015, so it's so. Okay. <laughs> it's so. Helmet, not too detailed with Rebels, with the Rebels version of the helmet. Torso, waves, that's the detail as well with the armor. Back, that's the detail. He's got a blaster, pistol. Not a pistol, but just a blaster. <laughs> and he's got the angry clone head as well. He'll go into focus. <laughs> got the angry clone head. And so. As always, <laughs> with every Star Wars Trooper, first door Star Wars Trooper, Clone Trooper, it's gonna be always the same head. <laughs> and so that's the Star Wars Trooper, guys. Move him to the side so we can bring in the fifth brother himself. And so, fifth brother, very nicely well done by Lego, very nicely detailed with the armor, everything, and mold, uh, like built in molds, everything. And so, I'm just very impressed. Um, <laughs> it's first. Similar to the Inquisitor Mayfigure, Mayfigure we got is Ty Advanced Prototype Starfire back in 2015. Just a little different because this is the fifth brother. He's not the same Inquisitor, so he's gonna be different. But the build of the main figure is kind of, is pretty similar, but it has different molds, of course, and everything. Lightsaber is basically the same exact lightsaber with the hilt, and everything double boy lightsaber. Hilt's the same exact lightsaber hilt, the same color, everything. And so. Take a look at the torso here. Very nicely done. Nicely detailed everything. Roy really portrays him very well. And if you guys don't know this, the fifth brother, the I mean, fifth brother overall, it was that he was actually used concept art for Kyle Ren that was gonna be in the Force Awakens. So this could have been Kyle Ren, but it was concept art for Kyle Ren for the movie, so they actually they decided not to use it for Kyle Ren, but Dave Boy is such a Dave saw this it, concept art they're like we should use this concept art as one of the characters for Rebels season 2 and so that's how the fifth brother came to be because he was used used concept art from the Force Awakens so that's pretty cool that's basically one of the only cool things about the fifth brother overall <laughs> <laughs> was that he was he was used concept art from the Force Awakens which is kind of big and so especially on Dave Boy's part <laughs> and the main show overall Part as well. And so, this brother, not so detailed everything. Hat, not so detailed. Very, very impressed with the hat. I was trying to figure out because I saw the, the pictures of them online. I was trying to figure out 
and I, I also heard they were gonna make him, and I was like, how are they gonna make it? Because I, I saw him in the shower, but then I'm like, how are they gonna make it? Like, the hat, the armor, I'm like, how are they gonna make it? <laughs> I just had that big question in my, like, in my head, like, we sound like a normal maid figure, so how are they gonna make it? And I guess, they did whatever they could, they actually made him look exactly like he does in Rebels in, in the main show, overall, so, yeah, that's the detail with the hat. Gotta be, pro gotta get big props to Lego about that. Um, <laughs> he also has the hilt on his mold armor and shoulder armor. He's got the hilt on the clip on the back of him, which can hold the lightsaber, just like the last Inquisitor. And just knocked him over. <laughs> knocked him over. Um, <laughs> and so the lightsaber clips on him, just like that, like in the show. And with the other Inquisitor May figure, we did we got last year. And so, that's what it looks like, but you had to take the blades off everything, which I'll do right now. Take the blades off real quick. And that's what it looks like with the lightsaber hulk on the back of him. It's the uh, fifth brother. Um, <laughs> that's too crazy about this character, okay? Out is really just what this character is, I was just waiting for to die. <laughs> and I'm not saying that this is some far kill or just wants everybody to die. No, I'm not that kind of person. I have reason for the, wanting this guy to die so badly. It's because he was bad as a Sith. The Quizzer, he was just horrible at his job. <laughs> he was just horrible at his job to pray to hunt down the Jedi. <laughs> or even find the Jedi. <laughs> because when I saw him fight Ahsoka, um, <laughs> he got kissed in the butt and he didn't even have a chance to do anything. He didn't even have a chance to do nothing. He just got pushed away and pushed, just shoved away. <laughs> Like he was nothing. <laughs> the Sunker just chunked him away with the force or with his or the lightsaber or with her lightsaber ability movements, everything just shoved him away into the wall or on the ground, knocked out unconscious twice. Yeah, it's like when he did it the first time. Yeah, um <laughs> he, got, he got knocked out. He got back up and he didn't have a chance to do anything. He he tried doing something but it didn't work. And then he tried boy he was pulling his lightsaber up. Yelling at her, you charging right at her, you thinking that that will work, but it never does work for a bad guy. It never works. It never works. <laughs> and so, he gets twirled around by Ahsoka with her lightsaber abilities and her movements with with her acrobatics and such. And so, he she drags it right into the into a pillar and knocks him out cold. <laughs> that is just. Dead unconscious cold. Yes. He just cold unconscious. For quite a while, which gave her the advantage on sister, so <laughs> Fifth brother, I don't know about you, man. I, I just don't know. But but I'll give him Lego props for making him. I don't mind having him in my Lego collection. I like him as a main figure. I like the detail. Um he he, he, he looks really cool looking. And I thought that there was gonna be big things with him, but not really, yeah, man. <laughs> he just, he was just, ended up, he just ended up being a whiny idiot like Anakin. <laughs> or just half of Anakin and half to <laughs> And so, that's the fifth brother. And so, he also has a double sided face, surprisingly. Which, it wouldn't surprise me at all, but it, it kind of surprised me. And for the double sided face, he's got the angry face. Like, he's got. Charge at Ahsoka's face. <laughs> it's basically what he's doing. Just yelling. And so it's kind of hard to turn the head back, so I'm just gonna take off the stand real quick so I don't knock it over or nothing. And so, well, I should take the head off here as well so I can show you guys the back torso. It's kind of hard to take it off. <laughs> so, the armor just comes right off. If I could get it right off. <laughs> I haven't taken this I haven't taken this main figure apart once, so it's gonna be kinda of hard to take it apart for the first time. So yeah. <laughs> so that's this is what the mold looks like. Nice with detail. Got the imperial symbols on each side. I got like all of the equipment. There's the lightsaber hilt clipped to the back. And so there's the torso, the rest of the torso print. As you can see he's got a little bit of that armor that that's actually a, a mold, and so we took a look at the back of them. That's what detailed as well. Got the little clip actually on the back 
as part of the detail as well, which is kind of cool. And so, let's go ahead and put this baby figure back together here. Put the molds back on everything. Put the head back on. Let's see if we can put the right facial expression put them on. <laughs> I like him in, in this stern kind of look. The angry look is okay, but just like this face bear. This look on his face bear. And so, that's the first brother in the Storm Trooper. And so, let's go to the last three big figures, which are the Clone Troopers. The fan favorite clones from the Clone Wars series overall. And some of my favorites as well is for Clone Troopers, for Clone Trooper wise characters. Captain Rex personally is actually my favorite, so I'm going to talk more about that a little, in just a second here. And so let's go to the last three main figures, then we'll go to the ATT Walker, and we'll go to the Final Thoughts afterwards. So let's go guys. Okay guys, so here is the last three main figures for the set, and they are the clone troopers themselves. Captain Rex, Commander Wolf, and Commander Gregor from the Clone Wars as well, and so these three main figures specifically I was really looking forward to having in my collection because, well, Captain Rex is my favorite clone trooper out of all of them. Commander Wolf, he's probably my fourth favorite, um, or my third. I know my second favorite is Koei. Um, Gregor, he's probably my fifth favorite because if, if we had more of him, I probably would like him more, but for what we saw with him in Clone Wars, I knew right off the bat, oh man, he's gonna be one of my favorites. <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> And so, I had to get a drink, I have some Pepsi in with me. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, for, the, for the detail with these three main figures, I think they should, it would go should have done more with them. The torsos are perfect. I love the torsos. Front and back. Faces, I really like as well. Especially Wolf's face there with the one scarred eye there. Very, very detailed. Really, really like it as well. Um, Commander Gregor, this is actually the first time ever we got Gregor as a Lego main figure, so yeah. <laughs> Very first time, so that's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Um, Captain Rex, this is not the first time we got him Captain Rex, so... I don't know. This is the second time we actually got him in his Phase 2 armor, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, the detail... Love the detail on the torsos. The faces, very nice with detail. Legs, I think they should have a little detail on the legs. Um, and especially when they did not include their clone helmets for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I can't really say why they didn't include Gregor's helmet because I didn't see Gregor's helmet in those specific scenes from Rebels Season 2 from those two episodes. But I know I did see Commander Wolf's helmet, Rex's helmet. Because Rex wore his, hel his own helmet. It, if you scenes, uh, in one scene specifically, um, Wolf, he wore his helmet as well, but it was rather ATT, excuse me, um, and Ezra wore Rex's helmet as well, so, I don't understand why Lango did not make their helmets. <laughs> I don't know, it's because they, they have concept art, uh, they have, like, art, the concept art for Gregor's helmet, I don't know if that's why, because it, it, it would look weird with two clones for their helmets and one without their helmet. I don't know why they made that why, I don't know, um, but I do think they should have given them their helmets. I really do think that, um, very highly, I do think that, um, I really do think, think that they should have given them their helmets because, well, we saw them in those scenes, so yeah, I don't get why they didn't give them their helmets. And so, Let's take a look at it, and, and that's enough of my rage about the bad things, but the good things about these baby figures, just to have these baby figures are a big positive because they're clone troopers. Come on, who doesn't like clone troopers? If you have, if you've seen Clone Wars, then you, if you, will, you will love the clone troopers. Then you would love them, I, I would think. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and so, for Captain Rex, he's got his long blaster rifle, as, as well as. Commander Wolf and Commander Gregor, he has a normal size blaster. And so for Rex here, that's what he details the armor on him, that's what he details with the blue lighting and everything from the Clone Wars and everything, and his face with the white beard and everything, that's what he details. Um, he's got his 
Uh, like an angry face like he's about to attack with the droids or even the stormtroopers nowadays. <laughs> so, let's take a look at the back of him. And that's the detail with the Kong armor. Very big process with the Kong armor. Flashback, like... Flashback to the Clone Wars, everybody. The Kong armor's back. <laughs> Kong armor's back with its fine glorious. <laughs> Especially with the Clone Wars series. And so, that's kept direct. Like I said, there's nothing much about the detail. It's just having the main figures is what really matters. And so, Commander Wolf. As you can see, he's got some nice detail on his face as well. And just now, yeah, he knocked everybody over. <laughs> probably because I have them too close to each other, so I'll probably gotta move aside Rex and Gregor so I can get my hand in here. Um, <laughs> so, Commander Wolf, nice and detailed with his face, everything, the scarred eye with the big scar they had for years now. It's so very nicely detailed. The mustache, everything, nicely detailed as well. The detail on the torso with the gray markings, everything, it scratches everything. Now to that's what detail as well. The arms, that's what detail with the black, I think that's what it is, I think. Or dark gray or whatever. Whatever it is, that's what detail with that. On the back, torso, with the armor, that's what detail with the gray markings, representing he was part of the wolf pack. AKA the wolf pack podcast, which I actually watch now and then. It's so, <laughs> yeah. It's so, Anyways, here's Commander Gregor, the last of the three clone troopers, and as you can see, he has tight bits of his armor. Because if you guys remember from the Clone Wars, he did, it, he was in the middle of that big explosion, so, yeah, he probably lost close to all of his armor, and so, yeah. <laughs> it's say he has this restaurant uniform on, with the sandwiches, uh, with the burger in the middle and such. And so, the face, pretty nice with detail, looks like an elder, elder, really like clone trooper face. And so, he's got no normal blaster, like I said. He's got his clone trooper ammo belt, which is pretty cool. And on the back, he's got the, the detail on his uniform with the sweet boy shirt everything. Nice with detail, detail with the ammo belt on the back as well. And so, that, those are the clone troopers, guys. The main iconic thing, and main figures you would want in this set. Excluding the fifth brother. <laughs> and so, let's get into the main walker itself, the ATT from the Clone War, or the iconic, or the iconic Republic tanks from the Clone Wars and Rebels. And so, and after that, we'll get to the final thoughts. So, let's go, guys. Okay, guys, so here's Tech Rex's ATT. And so, guys, what we're going to do first is before we get into the Main features of this ATT, we're going to compare it to the Toy 13 version that was retailed for $90 back in the day. That's based off the Clone Wars in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And so, as you can see guys, it, both ATTs basically have the same building design. Just a lot of similarities in this one, with this one here. It's just a little different, just because you guys can probably tell the differences. Especially with the back and the front and such. Yeah, showing that what it used to look like in the Clone Wars and now what it looks like in Rebels during the Galactic Era, Galactic Civil War era. Yeah. <laughs> it, it became a really different looking vehicle. It's kind of hard to tell what it would, this, what it would actually be, really. Because if you didn't know the Clone Wars said, or the prequels said, you probably would never know what this vehicle would have been. And so, but if you watch the Clone Wars every day, you guys would probably be able to figure out what this what this, what this tank is pretty easily. And so, the features, there's some similarities, similarities with the features, but there's also some differences as well. Because even though, with, with all these extra builds and such, built into the, the vehicle, into the ATT at this point, they're basically the same exact length. But this one is retailing for $120, this one's real, retailing for $90. And so... This one retail for $90 back in 2013 with the when the episode 2 sets were coming around. But so, I don't know. If, it, if, it, if it's really worth it, I don't know. Um, if it's actually worth it, then for, for somebody to get it for $120, I, I recommend it because it's got, it's got some great features to it. Uh, but if you guys are looking for one that you would want army build with, Find this, try to find this one, or a previous version, like the 2002 version, or the 2008 version that was based on the Clone Wars TV series in the movie, 
Um, because those are army building ATT walkers. This one is basically just like get is one of it just put on the shelf and look at. It's this this one's basically just for looking at on, on the shelf and like clutch design or something like that. Because of how unique it looks, everything with all the pop art stuff on all the platforms, all the cranes, everything that they were added on to the walker over the years. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's got, it's really different, okay, I gotta admit, with the turrets here, with the turrets right here, they're really completely different. This here ha didn't really change that much. This one's bigger than this one, but it, basically the Zion didn't really change much at all. Um, the ball turrets, they're, they're pretty much exactly the, the, the same exact design, just a little different, just in different colors. Um, the back, I'm gonna show you guys the back. Hey, just let you guys know, these two both have handles. Just let you guys know. Um, take a look at the back here. Um, this one basically has a, look, a little bit of a house look to it because the, the clothes are living in there, and so there's the door and everything. This one here is basically a walker look to it because it's got ball turrets on the back and everything. And so I guess Rex there and the, those other two clone troopers over the years took this out, pulled all this out, and just built it in a little house, a little hut in there. It had the platform and everything, the cranes and everything. And so that's where this all this here, this is where it would be at this point. And so I gotta tell you, it's very very different, and it's, it's very very different. I gotta really admit, it's, it, that's really all that I can tell you is that it's very different. You, if you want, it, basically overall, if you you would have to see both these sets, both these walkers in person to figure out which one you actually want the most. But it's making it a little more easy easier for you guys. Um, if you guys are looking for one that's army building equipment, like a material, army building material for Lego Star Wars, uh, for the clones or the stormtroopers or something, then this one is, perfect, is the perfect one to get. Um, this was the most recent ATT walker that was for the Clone Wars, and so and this is the most recent one that's been released to date. Um, and so, if you guys are looking for looking, if you guys are looking for one that's armor building material, then this was the perfect ATT. The Clone Wars was in 2008, the Attack of the Clones was from 2002, or this one from 2013. And any of those three that I just said, or just mentioned, um, those are perfect for army building. Um, this one here, the 2016 ATT um, from Star Wars Rebels, this one is basically what you would have to. Just, if you wanted to guess, you would have to basically, basically just look at it. And then you'll be able to figure out pretty easily if you want to say or not. But, if you guys are big fans of Captain Rex or the Clone Wars or anything like that, just don't get out of my mind that you guys are going to, that you guys are going to want to get this set. <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah, I just fucked my hands away. <laughs> and so, just don't get out of my mind that if you guys are Clone Wars fans or Captain Rex fans or Wolf fans, Star Wars Rebels fans, Imperial fans, Republic fans, then I, I, I highly recommend this one. I mean, th this is the perfect one for you guys. If you guys are in that league of fan favorite characters, it's uh, for Star Wars. So yeah, if you guys are into Rebels, then I would think you would want to get this. <laughs> uh, because you got the Inquisitor, you got the Stormtrooper, you got three clones that, you, that show up in the series, so you can re recreate that scene in those two episodes um, from season two. Um, for the Republic League character, uh, for the Republic, for the Republic League fans um, out there, if you guys are wide to get this set, I totally understand that because it is a Republic vehicle. Just it's just hiding in there um, under all that extra stuff. Um, but this is basically what I would think, which just said be on the shelf for looks, for looks basically because. If you guys you can you guys can probably use your imaginations a little bit to figure out what you can do with it. Um, you can make like a, another box that is just a, from your own perspective. Um, like the escape of the three clones from Coruscant or something, maybe because maybe they're on Coruscant when they left, when they left the Republic, so to go into exile and everything and go into hiding. So maybe to grab one of the ETCs from the Republic facility on Coruscant or something in the military base it just escaped. Um, I don't know. Because I like to know how they transport the ATT all the way to that planet. They probably would have had to 
grab a dropship as well to pick up the ATT uh, because otherwise I don't know how they would be able to travel to that planet with the ATT. Um, so you guys can make a box with that because if I, if, I, if I were doing something like that, I probably would do that. I would probably make a box like that. Build a giant Republic facility and have Wolf, Gregor, and Rex on the run from his from their own clone brothers, which are going to be attacking them because they try to escape, um, capture. And so, and they got this ATT out here. You can probably use this one or this one from for that mock because it depends on what it, what it actually looks like. <laughs> and so, it's kind of it, it's kind of weird that. In the Clone Wars series, they, they, they get, that Dave Floyd never saw making an episode arc about Wolf, Rex, and Gregor going to Hain. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool to see because that would make us completely understand what what got them to be on uh, that planet that they were on uh, Rebels. I forget what the name is, but it was like a desert planet as such. So I think you guys know, know what I'm talking about if you've seen Rebels before. Um, and so it would be pretty cool if we got like a, a Clone Wars episode arc, like a four part episode arc, telling us the story of how of what they went through and then decide to go into hiding for 15 years. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting, for, like for a season eight type episode, like for the one of the last episodes of the Clone Wars series. Um, that would be, that would be pretty cool. I, I would think that he probably had that in mind when they put him. Where they put these clothes of rebels, they probably had that in mind, but they just never did. It's like one of those episodes that we saw a concept start of with Yoda and the Wookiees or Ahsoka. It's the very last few episodes with Ahsoka in the series. I think that would be pretty interesting. I gotta admit, there's some Clone Wars episodes that I wish they would have made to air on television or even a movie, like thing, like type of way. Um, but. I have a feeling because they, a lot of people out there are still like Clone Wars information, so they Dave Floyd probably got that out of mind just playing and trying to do something about it. Trying to get all the information out so we know what, what what happened in the rest of the in Clone Wars era. And so let's get back onto the ATTs. Um so that's basically yeah, the legs here. It's every everything's basically looks. If you guys would watch this or this, it's basically as simple as that, but if you go into more specifics, I would have to go through all the features and such. I don't really have much time for that. <laughs> I really, I, unfortunately, I don't have all my time to do that. And so, <laughs> so basically, it's just the looks. Most of the features are similar, but there's some of them that are different as well. The looks are really different. Um, I mean, that's the easiest difference I can, you can probably see. The legs here, the legs are basically built the same. They're a little bit, bit different built, differently built, especially these two, but especially the longer ones in the center, but they're basically all the same built in designs. Um, the only difference with the legs is that one of the legs on this one are brown, and all six of these are gray, which uh, it would surprise me. And so let's go let's go to the features of the point the King version. And so that's so at the end of the comparison, just like you guys know. And so let's go to the features of Captain Rex is ATT. And so, let's start out here on the front, as always. Um, as you can see, here's the little ramp here that came as Ezra uh, Rex. Everybody was on, walking around in the front. Um, when they were trying to catch that big, be that big beast in the, that was living in the ground. And so, I'm not sure what this is here. I think this is like the other way it turns, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, I know these are ranches right here. These can move any way you want to. You can put them any way you want to. So that's quite simple. You can stick a figure out here, but I'm not going to do that just for the sake of the review, but I'm not going to leave it here. I'm going to put it somewhere else. That's what main figure. Would, that's what main figure would look like on the ramp, on the, the very front. So we move the turn up real quick. The ball turns, they rotate. Any way you want to, you can aim up any way you want. It's pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't get these two. We don't get the two that go up, that were on the bottom of the previous ATT. We only get these top two right here. And for the little cockpit here, it just lets you guys know the stickers everywhere on this set. I'm gonna let you guys know which ones are stickers or which ones aren't. These two, and there's two stickers on each side here for detail for the 
base there piece for the drivers cockpit and so you can open this up here and inside here there's a little chair here this is what this looks like and so there's a top this, is, this top piece has a print control panel on it it's nice new print and control panel for this wave and we got six major wolf in there because he was the one driving it most of the time in the two episodes of rebels Stick him in there. Try to get back in there. Try to get back in there. Oh. It takes some time to get him back in there. There we go. These take as long as I thought. <laughs> and so that's what it looks. He looks like in there. Sort of seeing in there. He's right in there. And that's what he looks like in there. And so let's close that up. That is great to drive the walker it, in the direction of escaping from the AX led by Agent Callus, which are trying to capture the clones for betrayal. <laughs> and so that is the front here, guys. And so let's go to the sides, the two sides here. The two sides here are basically the same. And so the only the feature here, the only couple features we have here are the Movable wires here, you can move mainly you want to. The cranes here with the extra ammo. And the platforms on the side here where you can set, set a mini figure up, up on here as well. Which is pretty cool. That's what he looks like up there. These are rails to move anywhere you want. And so, the crates here, this, this one in, is in the civics here, has a blaster pistol. Just wanted to fall on my hand. <laughs> Extra plastic pistol for the clones. For one of the clones at least. <laughs> and so let's go on to the other side here. And just let you guys know, these four little waves are basically the waves that are holding this whole thing up. These bigger ones in the center are just very loose. They can move uh, are basically easy to move. So these little ones here are basically are basically the main support for the big walker part uh, piece up here. For all, this, for all these pieces and such, and so, and these are just loose, so that's pretty odd <laughs> that Lego decided to do that. And so let's take a look on the other side here. And so as you can see here, we got these little towers up here, this way here is like a little light, I think. And this way here has the, it's like the chimney of the walker, basically it has all the fuses coming out of it. And so, I forgot to mention on the other turn, but these crates can move any way you want to, you can close them any way you want. It's quite simple. And so, it's basically somewhere on the other side, the movable wires on the side here, and the little platform right here, the rails can move. And so the, for this crate here, we get a couple of thermal, a couple of thermal detonators, which are nice to have, because you can get that many of them, that often. And so, Let's get to the main turret up here, the, the, on top here, before we get to the back. And so, <laughs> and just destroy it. <laughs> and so, as you can see, it's pretty simple to put that together in case you guys break it somehow. And so, this thing can rotate 360 degrees, but it can't, too, because of this little tower up here, this little satellite dish up here. So, if you guys want to make it go 360 degrees, you guys can take this down. But it can. Um, and this is basically what it looks like. It, it looks very different. It, it, I got if you say um, because well, this ATT is diff very different. So I kind of like this design for the little turret here because if you remember it from Clone Wars, it had the similarity to it to what we saw that big turret on top of the ATT in the Clone Wars series. So it had that, those similarities too. It just a little bit of add-ons and such. It had this whole Hey, we will cover with, with this little roof up here like the last one didn't have. So, this is actually this black piece here. This is actually brand new and exclusive to the set so far from what we know. But, this, from what I've known, because I've questioned Lego Star Wars sets for the past 9 years, 9, 8 years. And I've never seen this piece before, so this is new. This is pretty interesting. And so, we got stickers on the side here as such for the detailing on here. And we got one spot for the spring, spring on the shear, and it's right here on the turret, so you can make the turret look like it's firing. 
And so what we'll do is we're gonna have the fifth brother out here in the stormtrooper, and we're gonna see if we can take him down. Because it, it, uh, how high this is, so it's gonna be kind of challenging to aim it right. But in case you guys are thinking that it's so high, what you can actually do before I shoot it, you guys can actually move it down, up and down vertically. Let's see if we can get it to focus first, so you guys can see. <laughs> I guess I see it. <laughs> focus here. <laughs> kind of honest, I'm going to focus here. <laughs> Thank you, second guys, I can get the focus here so I can show you guys. <laughs> That's okay, you guys can probably see, you guys can probably sort of see, uh, I'm right, I'm right over the turn here, and as you can see you guys, you can probably move it down, up and down vertically, so you guys can aim it better, at the droids, or stormtroopers, or whatever, but in this, but in this case, the fifth brother and the stormtrooper, and so, we gotta actually, before we wait, may have the turn, we gotta actually put Captain Rex here, try to get the focus, yeah. get the focus to work this time. See if we can get the focus here. <laughs> hmm. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna stop this for right now because I gotta try to get this camera back into focus here, and then we'll get back to the fe main features. I apologize for this happening, but I'm gonna make sure. I wanna make sure that you guys see this stuff so that you guys know how to use uh, what these features are. So I'm gonna be right back with the main features of the Tetrax's ATT Walker. I it, right back after I get this camera back into focus and working again. So, I'm gonna be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so I got back working. <laughs> for some reason, it went out of focus for some odd reason. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> I guess we we'll come back into focus. So, we were gonna, where we left off was I was gonna put Captain Rex here. Onto the turret here, so we can aim the turret so that you can manage her and fire at the fifth brother and the stormtrooper. They were there all the way in the distance. Um, and we want to by having me show you guys that the turret can move as such, like this here. We can aim it anyway. You watch it downward like that to make sure you, the tech direct can fire at the droid stormtroopers or the fifth brother in this case. And so we're gonna manage the turret. Get him main turn in here. That's what he looks like in there. Catch the rest of all his fine gore in his goriness. <laughs> and so we're gonna stick this walker all the way back there. And we're gonna try to aim at the fifth brother and the stormtrooper. And so now we're gonna fire. And as you can see we totally annihilated them. <laughs> Especially the stormtrooper if you got launched into the air. And so that is what you can do with this bro sure on this ATT walker. And so let's bring the walker back in here. And so that is basically the main turn here. And there's not really much to it. Um other than the main feature for use of the spring will sure to fire it. And so let's take a look at the back here. The back side of the walker. The main little scene that we get introduced to Captain Rex. Wolf and Gregor a Rebel. And so, as you can see, one of the legs here on the bottom are totally light brown and dark brown. Probably because of the aging of the walker and the fact that the clothes that they had to have some parts replaced. And so, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And we got the lanterns up here for light, for light fixtures and such. And so, we got the little rails here as well, movable as well. And so, we got this little wire as well. This wire is actually longer than the one that was in the 2013 ATT, and so that's pretty interesting. And so we can have this, the little scene where Rex, Wolf, and Gregor uh, came out of the little hut there, and looked down from here at Kane as was being a Zeb from the Phantom. They came out of the Phantom, like right about in here. And so, yeah, that, that was a big iconic scene because uh, that's where we were actually introduced to the three clone survivors aboard this 
a 466 and Rebels, so yeah, technically in Rebels, so yeah, we got reintroduced to him again, if you guys watched Clone Wars A, this is the second time we got introduced to him, and so, yeah, that's for Gregor, Gregor I'm gonna put inside the hut, because he, for most of the time, was inside of the ATT, taking the controls and such, Making everything, making sure everything was powered up right, and, and seeing all, all the damage percentage or everything, see it's gonna be usable. And so, the door can open as well. So, and so the clothes can go in there. What's kind of interesting is that this tile piece here is actually pretty, and this big door here, this detail on the door here is a sticker, which is pretty interesting. And so, as you see, you can't really see much in there, and so, the only way we can get in there is if we take this top piece off. And so, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like once I get it off here. This whole thing can come off here, and so this is what the platform looks like here. And I'm aiming it up so you guys can see it, so I'm going to break it down. And so, these, these here are all stickers. The detail, of course, <laughs> I don't know why, I don't think LEGO would never make something like this for a big point like that. <laughs> They would just make stickers. And so as you can see, this is very colorful and mostly blues. Different tones of blue, yellows, grays, and such, which is pretty interesting. And so, with that inside here, and then I'm going to show you guys the inside. Okay, it's, pretty, it's going to be pretty interesting how to show you guys the inside, so. <laughs> and so, you guys can sort of see in there that there's a little white bug in there. That's what that white blob is. That's, that's a bug for, the, for Gregor. And there's a little this big green control panel up here. It is a sticker, of course. It shows the big beast that the clones can as a Zebus to be able to try to catch that lives under the ground. So that's pretty interesting. And so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna stick Commando Gregor, or as they call it Rebel Commander Gregor, in here. So you can man the control. And so that's what it looks like in there. And to show you guys, that's what that's how big it is basically. That's how big this little area is inside. And so we got this little railing here inside, so, so that's pretty interesting. We got the stairs here, which is pretty cool, pretty nice detail. And we got some clips in here for some extra weapon stuff. We got a wrench in here, we got some binoculars. Now, on the other side here, we can store these blaster rifles on the side here. And so that is basically all the main features, main features, but there's actually one more feature I gotta show you guys. And you guys remember me saying that this top piece can come off on the back here? Well, this is not the only piece that can come off on top to get into the inside. Let me pull this up first. This entire piece here, on the front here, can come off. The entire turn and everything can come off as well. The caps and racks and such. And this, these. White, the, the, yeah, white, yellow points here have sticker detailing as well. These are all stickers with the pink, gray, different tones of blue, pop art style coloring on the points here <laughs> for stickers. And so that's what that looks like. And so, what's basically only in the, in the inside here, because if I show you guys here, there's nothing much in there. <laughs> there's not really much in there. Uh, the only thing that's in there is extra ammo for your turret. These sprewer, two more sprewer shooters. That's really all that's in there. Um, I, would, I, I, I really want that into Lego to have like a little same control panel in here instead. Instead of having these, instead of having these extra ammo. It's nice that we're getting them in the sets for the kids, especially because in case they lose them, then they have two more of them. But I really think that Lego could have done more with this front part here, other than, other than having this one driver control <laughs> control cockpit, I'm trying to say. <laughs> and so, because I like, know a lot of people with ATTs in the past have been complaining about that because I remember having the 2008 Hasbro ATT from the Clone Wars series, and it was just big, it was huge, it was one of those huge. Clone Wars vehicles that Hasbro made back in the day, and, um, I know it was so long ago, <laughs> so long ago, <laughs> and so, I remember how big that was, I don't have any more with me, because I still got even to get, to make some money, because I do have a, that stuff that's going for nowadays, and so I wanted to make some money off of stuff, so my Hasbro question, and so, I remember how big that was, and 
I, I remember it had a lot of features with the scene in, in this area, in this area back here as well. And having this cockpit over as well. And so, I don't understand why Lego did do something like this for the front part here, for the front portion of the tank here, or the walker. It's like the back here. And so, I don't understand that. I don't know if it's because of design, because it, it, it would just be taking too much time for them to do it, or the fact that it would make the tank just a step bigger, this walker a little bigger, make this a little wider or something. I don't understand why, but it's okay. Because it is like I said, it's always been the same thing. Because it, they always had to do something with the back, but never did anything with the front very much. They just add some extra ammo or turret or, or well made turret or something. And so overall guys, this ATT is it is a great ATT, but it's uh, not great at the same time because it's not basically because of, of the play features and nothing, it's just the reason for are you guys going to play with it a lot or not? That's basically what I'm going for. It's because of how... Uh, uh, sorry guys, this is Carrie Carrie stage. This is the one who's cooperating with me today. Um, <laughs> it's so... This is this ATT, this point is specific for the Rebels line. Um, this is basically what you would just put on a shelf and provoke. Basically, there's not really much you can do with this. Other than... If you guys say how you use your imagination and think of something cool, um, I, I don't really have much to tell you guys. Um, I heard twenty dollars. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm gonna talk more about that in the final thoughts. So, yeah, I mean, just wait for that in a little bit here. <laughs> but this is a great set. I gotta tell you, this is a great set. You get you get great big figures, but they say uh, I think we're going to say a little more effort. Uh, Three specific main figures, the clones. Um, just for more detail, because of how fan favorite these clones are. Even Gregor, because we never saw much of Gregor in the Clone Wars, he was a fan favorite still. With along with Rex, Wolf, Koei, Greedy, Bly, and so I don't understand why Lego did put more detail into, into these guys because of how fan favorite they are. I don't understand that, especially Rex. But seriously, they can give him an AR print. They can even give him his helmet. I, I don't understand that. I know we don't see much with him with his helmet on, but still, he still has his helmet. I don't understand that. I just don't understand that at all. We saw Wolf with his helmet on. We saw, we didn't see Gregor with his helmet on, which completely makes sense with him. But really, with Rex and Wolf, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Gregor can't really do much with him because he basically lost, lost pretty much all of his armor. But Rex and Wolf, they, they basically had all their armor still on, them, mostly. And so I don't understand why they get put more detail on to those two specifically. Um, I I'll, I'll get. I, I just don't understand that. And so let's get out to the box. Is it the box? It will end up there. So let's go, guys. So here's the box guys, as you can see it is a very very big box but very thin as well. <laughs> very thin but very big. And so on the front here we get a very cool scene here with the walk with the ATT walker with Rex up here being the turret, Wolf right here being an extra help extra assistance for Gregor which is down here. Fire at the fifth brother and the stormtrooper which are all the way down here in the back here, prepared to attack Gregor, which is down here. I mean, which is about to attack him. And so, we actually got the AT-AT AT walkers, the ads, in the background. So, so that's pretty cool. I gotta tell you, this is a very cool concept art for, the, for our LEGO Star Wars box. I gotta tell you, this is one of the best ones I've seen before. So, I, I'm really happy with this box. And so, we got the LEGO Star Wars logo at top, as always. We got Kyle Ren on the top as well. We got the Star Wars Rebels logo. Telling you, this is a Star Wars Rebels set. It's part of the Star Wars Rebels logo line. We got the Disney logo down here. We got the Mayfigure line down here. Mayfigure collection. We got Wolf, Rex, Gregor, and the Fifth Brother, and the Storm Trooper. And we got the set information here with the age range, the set number, the name of the set, and the piece count. So we go to the top here. We got the Mayfigure collection again with the Fifth Brother as the size accurate full of the Mayfigures. And so if we take a look at the back here, we got the Lego Star Wars app advertisement about the new Star Wars app for Lego. Um, we got the Transformers of Blue side of the use of the ATT. 
We get another little, little ballot scene here with Wolf and Gregor down here. Opening one of the crates for several detonators to throw at the fifth brother and the star trooper while Rex is up here manning the turret up here on top. Uh, we got all these death features here with the holding handle so you can let them uh, the tank with the entire stuff for good carrying for, for carrying somewhere or something, which is pretty cool. Um, we got the opening top here, we got the inside little hut there, we got the movable cranes, we got the opening main cockpit, driving cockpit area for the front, and we got the movable turret. And um, so that's all the features and such in the box, and that's all that I can show you guys for the box. And so, let's get into the final thoughts. So let's go guys, let's finish this off. Okay guys, so overall with this set here, I gotta admit, this is a great set to have, but for the price, it's, re it's returned for, and the fact that there's some black lacking parts here to this set, um, I really think this set is worth $120, to be honest with you. If it was like around a thousand pieces, I think it, it would be worth it, but with it being 972 pieces, I don't really see the potential for it being $120. I think of it, it as a more of a hard ten dollar set or even a hundred dollar set because of the features to it. The features to it are perfect. I really like the features. Um, but there's some lacking areas there because I remember from the Star Wars Rebels episodes that um, this ramp here it went all around here as well on both sides. So I don't know why Lego decided to exit part out. I don't get. It. I, I don't understand why they did that. I don't know why they're, I don't know if they were just being dumb about it, they were just being stupid about it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know they can say, oh, I guess we forgot, forgot this part, so screw it. We, we, we don't care, <laughs> we don't care, we're, we're done with it already, right? we're not going to do nothing about it now. <laughs> Toy! So, <laughs> it, if that's what they did, then they're being a bunch of idiots. <laughs> because it, it, if you want, because I know there's adults out there that get this like a Star Wars is because of how big Star Wars is now, especially with the Force Awakens and Rogue One, which is going to be coming out soon in December. People are going to be wanting to care a little more for these Lego Star Wars sets now, but Lego is not really wanting to pitch in and give us and give us every single detail. I understand that, but I, I know it's, I know it's because of the piece count that they had to use for this set, I, I don't know, maybe that's what the reason was, I don't know, um, the main figures, um, fifth brother, perfect, love him as a main figure, but not great as a Star Wars character, he basically did nothing, um, <laughs> if you guys remember from Star Wars Rebel Season 2, if you guys seen the entire season, um, yeah, you don't see much of the Inquisitors as usual, because we never, see, we never saw much of the Great Inquisitors Season 1 either, um, for Regarding how many episodes were in that season, um, <laughs> we didn't see much of him either, so I wouldn't be that surprised about that. Um, but him, for him being a Star Wars character, it's like every single time he showed up with the Seven Sisters, he was always the one who never did anything. It, the Seven Sister always ended up being the one who shines. <laughs> he was the one who always ended up being the brute that always gets, always gets pushed around by Kane and Ezra. Kane and Ezra pushes the fifth brother around. If this brother was being trained by Vader, <laughs> and he got put, he ended up being put around almost the entire time, especially with Maul. He, he Maul just annihilated him. He just swallowed him. <laughs> he just knocked him over like he was nothing. <laughs> knocked him out like he was nothing. <laughs> just like I said, how Sokka did. He, he she just knocked him out twice like he, like he was nothing. Like he was just rag doll. <laughs> it's that sister always ends up being the one who shines. <laughs> like seriously. Just keep the same sister around. Just kill the fifth brother, please. But that's all I was wishing for to happen. And so, of course, they had to have this. He's a thing out in season two. All three quizzers died. Basically, in five minutes, they're all dead. <laughs> like, seriously, you could you guys could have done that episodes ago, man. Like weeks ago, man. Come on, you could have done that weeks ago with the fifth brother. And just like the seventh sister, like they have her join up with the. His brother, I think that's what he was called in the season finale. Just had one last battle with the Jedi. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking, but um, huh. I like the design of the fifth brother. I just don't like him 
as his, as a Star Wars character, he just didn't do much. If they did, if they gave a little more to him, and if they did, if they gave him a little more of a powerful type of thing, type of side to him, I think he wasn't more of a cooler Star Wars character as a Sith. But you would think for a Sith in Star Wars that he they would be powerful and such. Now I guess now at this point, not every Sith is powerful. Is all evil and powerful like the Emperor Vader in the sense of the Grand Quizzer. Especially with the Grand Quizzer because he was the one who was really evil and powerful overall. Among all of them. And so, yeah, I think what this does done for Star Wars was bring out the fifth brother in the sense of Sister first in season one. They should have done that first. And then season two, have the Grand Quizzer come around because. <laughs> If, if it happened that way, he probably would have heard about the death of the fifth brother and the seventh sister, and he probably would have been pissed and would report that to Darth Vader, and then Darth Vader would send the Great Inquisitor to annihilate the rebels and the Jedi, the two Jedi at the King and Ezra. And so, I think that would have been a lot, more, a lot better of a way for rebels to go, um, to go into process. I think that would have been a lot better because it would have showed the ironic the emotion, the fear. In the in the season two, because I know season two was supposed to be related to the Empire Strikes Back, and so with the Empire trying to overthrow a little more, it gave the upper hand on the rebels the entire time, and so I think they should have done that because I think with Vader showing up to fight King Ezra well in a CJ Thought movie, then having the Grand Inquisitor come in, they're gonna think that he would be another Dark Vader, like King like Ezra was it. Is that Vader? And Kara would say, no, that's someone else. That's someone else that's, that's as powerful as him. Um, <laughs> that would be a lot better because that would be like a Dark Ball scene where Dark Ball came out of the blast door and fought Qui Gon and Obi Wan. That would be a scene like that where they stand and stood there like, oh, oh, <laughs> we didn't expect this. <laughs> I thought you were another. You were another one of those. Other two Inquisitors that we already fought, uh, already defeated, and he ended up not being that. And so he was a little more possessive, a little more seducing. He was, a, he was more willing to seduce as well to the dark side. Seth's sister, bro, fifth brother, did really do that. He they didn't really ask him, join me, and together we can rule the galaxy. He can be in my presence that you'll become all powerful. We can destroy Bear the Emperor. They didn't do that. They didn't really do that at all to him. <laughs> like, seriously. They just spawn like, like any other arena battle. <laughs> like a Greek arena battle. <laughs> and so, that's my raging about the fifth brother. Um, <laughs> the stormtroopers. Oh, that's again the stormtroopers. Don't blame him. I don't blame Lego about that. Um, but the main favorite collection. Fifth brother is perfect. That's the detail everything. Stormtrooper always has to have. Gregor. That's okay, I don't mind him, but Rex and Wolf, I think Lego should have got a little more detail on them. I think they should have given them the, their helmets again, and some arm frames, and maybe some little, at least a little bit of leg frame as well. And so I think I'm going to rate this set guys a 9.5 or 9 out of 10. One of those two, but probably mostly 9 out of 10 because of those black blackings uh, with the two main figures with the uh, more detail and such. I think they should have done that. The ramps here on the side here, but other than that, this is a good set to get. But I probably suggest wait for this set to go down price to like a hundred ten or a hundred dollars because this is not worth a hundred twenty dollars. But if you guys are willing to get it for a hundred twenty dollars, because if you give, if you're a big Captain Rex fan or Clone Wars fan or even Rebels fan, the Wolf, Gregor fan, Fifth Brother, I don't think there's gonna be that many Fifth Brother fans out there. Um, but if you guys are any of those fans out there, they're are related to those characters, I highly recommend getting this set. This is the perfect set. You're still going to be get a highly qualified set that you guys will love to just put this stuff and look at because of how unique it looks to Star Wars because it really represents what Star Wars is. Um, it's this magical imagination type story. It's like a, it's not really magical, but it's more of a imagination way you can create your mind type of story and movie. It's so, that's gonna be it guys, so and that's what we're gonna leave off with the Cat Directions ATC and so that's gonna be it guys, so be sure to subscribe and comment down below on my channel. I'll see you guys in another Lego Star Wars review 
Um, I got a main figure review, which will be coming back soon. It will return soon. Um, and maybe a vlog or something. But the next set that I'm going to be reviewing is the is the Rebel Combat Circuit, I think, that's going to come with Ahsoka, Mayor Sato, as well as Agent Kallus, a Chopper. That's going to be an exclusive set. It's going to be coming out on August 1st. That's, it. that's right, guys. It's going to be coming out on August 1st. And it's going to be $110. So, yeah. That's that's actually a lot better of a price. So, when this set comes out, you guys are probably going to be thinking, which one should I get? This set or the Rebel, the Rebel Combat Circuit? If you guys are more, are you, if you guys are more of a Kwong fan, this set is probably worth it. If you guys are more of a Ahsoka fan or something, get that set when it comes out on August first. And and then after that, it's gonna be Rogue One time, guys. It's gonna be Rogue One. It's gonna, it's gonna be like Rogue One, like the Force. It's gonna be like the Force Awakens, where Force Fry here around. Then we got all pumped for the Force Awakens. Same thing for this year with Rogue One. Force Fry, we're gonna be all pumped for up for, for Rogue One. So yeah. After that, after that one review in August, it's gonna be Rogue One time, guys. And so that's gonna be it, guys. So have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.